So what's the purpose to do all these things? You know, why are we having this class? And why are we here this week? And why are those crazy people in Bani Mountain going to do a thousand days of retreat? You know, why would someone do a three-year retreat? And uh, what, what, what are we doing? Why are we doing all this? What's the point? I mean, we, I, I, why do people do yoga? I, I have a yoga teacher in the monastery, you know, he said, wow, so many million people doing yoga in America. This is a high, this is a high secret practice. And I said, no, Rinpoche, you don't understand, they just want to lose weight. You know? <laughs> uh, and uh, we all have different motivations for wanting to learn to meditate. We all have different goals in mind uh, for learning how to meditate, right? And they, they have different goals. People are here for different reasons. Everybody's here for a different reason. Right? But in the end, you are learning a skill uh, which will change the world. Right? You are learning skills uh, which you will take and change the world. You know, Jesus came to this world. And Buddha came to this world. And then now it's your turn. Okay. So you will, you will make a change in the whole world. You, if you study these things well, you have the capacity to stop the suffering in the world. Okay. If you study these things well, we're not just having, what do you call it? Some kind of class? Or, the point is not that. The point is that lots of people are in pain. Lots of people are confused. Uh, I mean, what is this world? Who are we in this world? What are we doing here? What, what are we all doing here? We are struggling to make a living. Uh, we are struggling to have a little bit of happiness. We are struggling to have uh, some relationships. But in the end, isn't it all hopeless? I mean, you, you, you meet somebody, you get married, you have some kids, and then you all die. I mean, you, you get a job, you get promoted, you work hard, you create something, you get remunerated, re, re, you get paid. <laughs> uh, and then all the money is gone and, and you die. That's the story of, of everybody. That's what we're doing here. The whole thing is uh, crazy. You know, we, we try to be civilized, right? We try to drive in line on the highway and we try not to bite people's fingers in restaurants and, you know, we try to be good to each other, but it's all hopeless, you know. The whole thing is, we are pretending to be uh, calm and civilized in a world where everything must be destroyed, including us, right? And, and there's no point to life, really. Uh, just make more money that, the, that, that you will leave behind when you die? Or do more headstands? So you, what, are you going to die in a headstand? You know? Uh, what's the point of it all, right? Uh, the current state of this world is an accident. Uh, the current state of this world is due to some kind of, I don't know, evolutionary quirk? We are evolutionary quirks, okay? You, uh, you are among uh, a gradually diminishing handful of people in the universe who still yell back when the boss yells. Okay? You are among a small minority of living creatures in this universe who still didn't get it. You, know? you are at a certain level of evolution which is uh, destructive, you know? self-destructive. You, you still hurt people back when they hurt you, and then they come back to hurt you again. And, and you are not normal. You are retards. <laughs> okay. uh, no, like there are many worlds where people figured it out already. And we're like at the back of the class, right? Uh, we just didn't figure it out. And it's not a big deal to fix the world, okay? It's not like uh, a lot of work. Okay? Just get people to understand the screaming boss thing and you're halfway there. See, if people 
uh, stop screaming back at their boss or their spouse and they reflect on how they have created these things themselves, already half the world's problems are fixed. All right? So changing the world is not such a big thing as you think. You know, It's not like you, it's going to take a lot of work. It's just a change in how you view things, right? And that change in how you view things will stop death itself. Okay? Death doesn't exist on many worlds of this universe. It exists on this world because we're retards, okay? And we don't get it. Uh, but it's not natural. Dying is not natural. And the body falling apart is not natural. Getting old is not natural. Uh, Having war, having hunger, these things are not the way things usually are. You have to really be dumb to have those things. Okay? You have to be so dumb that you will yell back at the boss who yells at you and not understand that you are making them yell back at you again. Okay? We are in a temporary, what do you call it? Retard stage. And, and it doesn't have to be like this and it, and it will be fixed. Somebody's going to fix it. Right? It might as well be us. Okay. We can do it. Right? So we just have to get the emptiness thing down. Right? We have to learn to meditate, like the book said. And then January, right, we're going to do the real thing. So January, we'll go try to get to level four or five or something. Right? And we'll do a 10 day retreat together. And we'll just work really hard on, on meditation. And then then you've got to have something to meditate on. Okay? You've got to use it for something. Meditation is like a microscope. And then you have to put something under it. It's not a big deal to own a, a strong microscope if you don't know what to put under it. Right? Here we go on what to put the microscope on. During the week, those of you losers who flew away and flew back, uh, we, we went ahead in the book. And we uh, studied emptiness, you know, because we thought you wouldn't even notice. Uh, we would still be on the same subject of meditation when you got back. And then we're kind of like, I don't know, kids who sneak to the TV and watch their show, and then the mom walks in, and, and then they turn the channel to something uh, that mom will accept. Rinpoche had a terrible, terrible... Uh, Habit. Uh, and I told the story, it's funny. Uh, he used to fly into Bangalore and then drive to the monastery. It's eight hours to the nearest airport from the monastery. Because you have to go 10 miles an hour because you have to drive around with pigs and chickens and cows. And uh, so the board of directors of the monastery and the board of directors of the Ceremony Food Fund and the board of directors of the Asian Classic Central Project, all these big shots would come to the city from the monastery to see Rinpoche to the monastery. Right? They would drive a whole caravan of cars to the monastery, but mostly they just wanted to stay in the hotel for the night so they could watch TV, <laughs> uh, which is not allowed in the monastery. So anyway, Rinpoche would land from New York, Frankfurt, you know, and then he would come to the hotel, and the first thing he'd do, he'd run over the TV and put his hand on it. And he'd say, TV's hot. You know? <laughs> Why are we talking about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you went away for the week, and we snuck out and did emptiness together. Okay? So we've already covered a little bit of this chapter on emptiness. Uh, we basically, we just were talking about how uh, you should study emptiness from the classics, from the big, difficult books on emptiness. Like, don't, don't go for some lightweight thing. You know, if you're going to try to crack emptiness, do it with the heavyweights. Right? Here we go. Mm. Dena Sama Dun Sawe Gonga Lana Me Pane J Gagni Chambin Lekshe Dina Min. As we were saying in Tibet, in Buddhism, 
as opposed to the usual historical flow, right? Usually at the beginning, uh, when you're close to the founder of the religion, things are more accurate and more pure. And then as the centuries go by, people misunderstand and people mess it up, and pe especially people load on unnecessary junk, you know? And then by the 2,500 years later, the, the original beautiful 29 pages of the New Testament get all, you know, loaded down with, with other people's stuff. I, I used to tell my friends, they said, do you like the Bible? I say, yes. The red print, you know. Uh, Jesus' own words, those are extraordinary. You know? Then you get into this thing of, you know, if your neighbor bugs you, poke out his eye, or, you know, all this other stuff. Uh, but in Buddhism, the opposite happened, okay? As the centuries went by, uh, the teachings on emptiness were made more and more accessible, right? So that in the last 500 years, we have Tsongkhapa. Tsongkhapa was the teacher of the first Dalai Lama. And he was very frustrated by the misunderstandings of emptiness in, in, in his time and in Tibet. And then he worked really hard and he, he, he got it straight, right? extraordinarily straight. Right? So, so the version of emptiness you hear here, the one that we're talking about, the boss, all right? When we talk about emptiness, and we go straight to your yelling boss, right? Uh, that's special. You can't hear that kind of emptiness almost anywhere. It's only in Tsongkhapa. It's only Tsongkhapa who, who really clarified it beautifully, all right? And you're just lucky. You are in a room where people are talking about the highest ideas of in the world, and, and in practice how to use them to help people, right? with yelling spouses. Right? So, Shepa uh, Nam So it's a special lineage about the high ideas with which you can save the world. And you can use it in any, uh, what do you call it? You can use it in any walk of life. Uh, whatever your job is, whatever your interests are, whatever your occupation is, from computer chip designer to college professor to three-year retreat, uh, it doesn't matter what you do. If you can learn these ideas, you can you can change your uh, what do you call it? You can make revolutionary changes in your field. All right. If you get these ideas, no matter what your field is, no matter what your interests are, you can you can change it drastically. Okay. My teacher said, uh, Mike, he called me Mike, right? He said, uh, after I got a Geshe, he refused to call me Geshe. Right? He said, Mike, uh, he said, uh, you go to uh, New York, uh, you take Diamond Cutter Sutra, uh, you make a million dollars. I'm like, Rinpoche, I don't want to make a million dollars. I want to stay in the monastery. He's like, no, no, you go to New York. You prove you can make a million dollars with, with these ideas in a field of endeavor in which you have no interest at all. Business, you know? You, you, I'm picking for you a, a, a field of endeavor which you, you, you have no idea about it, you have no interest in it, you have no experience in it, and you have you have no intention to ever be in business, right? I was happy in the monastery. I didn't want to leave the monastery. I left the monastery once in eight years to go to my brother's uh, funeral, you know? And that was it. Uh, and once to go to Thanksgiving dinner across the street. You know, I didn't want to go anywhere. And then he's like, go to New York, start a business, you know? And I'm like, why? And he said, you need to prove that these ideas work with anything, you know? Any, anything, any, whatever your field is, whatever you do for a living, whatever your interest is, learn emptiness, and then you can use it to change that world. And if you can change a world 
one world, you can change any world. If you can revolutionize business management, which you could care less about, uh, then you can do anything. Right? And he just sent me like that. He forced me to go. And I'm really happy he did. At the time, I was really upset, really angry. Uh, so you, if you understand what we're about to embark upon, you can do anything. If you learn Tsongkhapa's presentation on emptiness, <coughs> you can do any change in the world. And that company just sold to Warren Buffett, it reached a quarter billion dollars. Warren Buffett just bought it uh, last April, okay? Like, you can do anything. Uh, just learn emptiness. You can do anything you want. Here we go. Jane D. Pakyo ki tenjo yin sir se nane tawa ten la bebe shung shen helzo la semra min zimba jay rangi yidam jambe yang ki kan kandi shubana jambel ki lama so in his time, in his day, Tsong Kappa read all the books on emptiness and he didn't like them. He said, these are not clear and I don't understand. The vast majority of the books written in his time by the great masters of India and Tibet, he said, I can't, they cannot be used uh, by regular people to, to make magical things happen. Okay? So he was dissatisfied and he had the power to see a, an angel. He had made contact with an angel called Manjushri. And any time he had a problem in his life, he just asked her, him uh, what to do. Okay. So he asked Manjushri, you know, where am I going to learn about emptiness? You know, what should I do? Because these books all seem like they have mistakes in them. Okay. And he, she, uh, Manjushri said to him, Dawa Drakwa ni sange ki shingam shikne Okay? Uh, an old Indian writer named Chand Master Chandkirti, he was living in a Buddha paradise. Okay? What's Chandakirti in Arya? According to this, he was a Buddha. Okay? He was hanging out at Buddha Parana. <laughs> I'm sorry, he was a high bodhisattva called Namcha uh, Nintam Chen. And he looked down on this world and said, People don't get it. People are having trouble understanding emptiness. Okay? So he came to this planet. He came to this world. Chandakirti came to this world. Uh, so, and then he established a tradition of explanation of emptiness based on uh, the Gajanas books, okay? Nama Jande Yang Latsema Zimba Yin and this is the this is the person who, according to the angel of wisdom, could explain emptiness properly. He said, "You want to understand emptiness? You study the text of Chandakirti." J Suratave Kor Tumeshunamna Ranchaki Tersam Sok Chebetse Kokashin Tokawa Juma Shun Hajang Ningshin. Frankly speaking, if people like you and I try to bite off uh, Jetson Kappa's explanation of emptiness, you're going to get a stomachache. All right? My mama used to put it that way. Uh, it's very difficult. Okay? His explanation of emptiness is difficult. It's not easy. And it takes work to... It takes work to understand. Okay? You have to pay for it. No pain, no gain. Okay? You have to pay for it. You have to work hard. To, to get it, you have to work hard. 
Konsan le namo miken. When can? But young young shit to jamma. If you keep coming back for more punishment, all right. If you keep coming back to it, you, you don't give up. Keep coming back to his explanations of emptiness. Yang yang jana sheng shen le de selka tang sakhe kepa chen tuma ye. You will find treasures in there that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. Okay, his his explanations are tough, and they take a lot of thought, and they take meditation, and they take a good teacher. But if you if you attack uh, reality through Jetson Kappa's explanation of it, then to make a two a quarter billion dollar company in your free time while you're doing Geshe degree for twenty years, right? Uh, it's a it's a no brainer. Okay, I mean, you can reach into reality and make things happen. The day we started ACI Phoenix, we got a check for one hundred fifty eight thousand dollars from a person I never heard of. Okay. Uh, no, you can make cool stuff happen, uh, but you gotta work. Okay, you're gonna learn emptiness. But you gotta work hard. It's gonna be. It's gonna. You gotta work hard. I can't give it to you on the plate. You gotta work hard. Okay. Can't you. Don't need la to jung de shadow so. Can can you shen? So can rim shen ko dar sap shen le chewa on. Der sap shen le chewa on. There's a process for learning about meditation. There's a certain process. Number one, you come to a class and you hear about it. You come to a class, some guy gets up there and talks about emptiness. That's step number one. Step number two, you go home and my lama said, "Cook it." You go home and you think about it at home. And then third step, you meditate on it. This is the traditional way. Uh, what monastery am I from? Serame. That's not the name of Serame Monastery. It's called Tisam uh, Nodami. The name of Serame Monastery is uh, the golden island of learning, contemplation, and meditation. Okay. Those three steps. Shares of Kirin Chukwu. Dena Dalen Jai Lame Gomashin Shakte. So I'm going to teach you emptiness, says Pavel Kurebache, based on Tsongkhapa. I would like to give you just a short introduction to emptiness based on Tsongkhapa. And we'll stop there. <laughs> People are tired. Oh, you had your second win. Those cookies got to you. All right, just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. Maybe ten minutes, okay? Mm. Uh, so this is the actual explanation study. Okay? This is a. I mean, people study this book. My teacher's teacher in the monastery, uh, Yeshi Wangchu, came from Tibet. He escaped Tibet. Uh, Geshe Thubten Rinchen's teacher escaped to bed, came to the monastery, and taught this book. You know? So, you know, people wait 10, 20, 30 years to get to this line. You got it in a week. Okay, here we go. Dear Dumbo Kazaki Dhamma Tenna Dabsa Subani, we are going to try to establish that you are not who you thought you were. Okay? Kazaki Dhamma. We are going to try to establish that you are not the person you thought you were. The person you thought you were cannot be changed. The person you thought you were cannot be made into an enlightened being. Okay? Because they don't exist. And if they did exist, they wouldn't be changed, they could not be changed or improved. If you are someone coming from your seeds in your mind, then 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 you then you can do anything, right? If the financial status of the world is coming from your mind, you can make a quarter billion dollar company in, in record time. Okay? If it's coming from your mind, things are doable. If they're out there, that's a problem. Okay? 
can't change stuff that's out there. If stuff is coming, if stuff is flowing from your heart chakra right now, then you can change it. Just plant different seeds, all right? You are not who you thought you were. Because if you were, the situation would be hopeless. All right? You are not, you are not the solid external thing that you thought you were. You are, a, you are flowing from your own mind. And you are flowing from the amount of kindness that you show to others. Therefore, you are infinitely plastic. You are infinitely, what do you call it? Moldable. You can be molded into any shape. Alright? Alright. Gyapale. Arya Deva said in his 400 verses, Sanam Mimpa Dhamma Tok Bhardu Tati Dopa Dhan Thamartashi Kundopa Khandi Shede Kepa Yin Arya Deva, Master Arya Deva, who is, who is this at all? Arya Nagarjuna is a great disciple, Arya Deva, right? Uh, he said there are, are three things you want to do in your life, okay? First, you want to stop those things which are not goodness. First, you want to stop those things which are not goodness. Number two, then in the middle part of your spiritual career, you should stop thinking of you as you. Stop thinking of you as you. And by the end, you should stop all the ways you look at things. All right? So anyway, some cryptic quotation. Stop, stop those things which are not good. Then stop the you that you used to think you were. And then stop everything that you used to think. Okay? All right? Got it? Mm. <coughs> then you will be a master. What does those three things refer to? That's what we got to find out now. Shepatar, Lende Mepatawe Tawaso, Kebu Chungdingi, Kapsu Dok. In the first two great sections of the teachings on the path, the steps of the path, right? Called what in Tibet? Lamrim. In the teachings of the first two great sections of the teachings on the steps of the path are called teachings for people of little capacity, lesser capacity and teachings for people of medium capacity. In those two sections of this book and every other Mahmoud, they... we disprove wrong views of reality, such as uh, not believing that what happens to you comes from what you do to other people. Okay. There are there are people who believe that something good can happen in their life without them being good to other people. There are some people who believe that something bad could happen to them that's not their fault, all right? And, and, and the, the lower parts of this book, the more elementary parts of this book, are meant to stop that lack of goodness, got it? That was the first line from Ayurveda. He said, stop that which is not goodness. What is not goodness refers to thinking that you could get anything good happening to you without helping someone else, or that anything that ever bad person you ever met or bad thing that ever happened to you didn't come from not taking care of other people. That's basic stuff. Next, then step two, try to understand that you are not who you thought you were. Mike is not who Mike thought he was. But that's step two. What's step three? Try to understand that all the things around you are not what you thought they were. That's Ayurveda. That's Master Ayurveda's talking. First, stop your lower wrong views. <coughs> then stop your belief that you are who you think you are. And then stop your belief that the things around you are what you thought they were. Okay? So I am going to give my presentation about emptiness following that advice. So question for you. Is Paboka Rinpoche going to discuss how Mike is not the Mike that Mike thought he was? 
or is he going to discuss first how nothing around Mike was what Mike thought it was? He's going to talk about Mike. That's all. He's justifying his decision of which kind of emptiness to teach you first. He's going to talk about the emptiness of you first. Okay. In each person, it's it's specific to Christine. He's gonna he's gonna explain why Christine is not who Christine thought Christine was. And he's gonna then he's gonna explain why Jamie is not the person that Jamie thought Jamie was. And then he's gonna explain to Jeff why Jeff is not the person that Jeff that Jeff, Jeff thought Jeff was. Okay. Then he's gonna go on to other stuff, <laughs> but he's gonna start with each person individually. And he's using the quotation by regarding a student to justify that approach. Okay? Mm, Debayu. Dakni nipa medyo dakla ke me kyan. Is there a difference between the Jamie that Jamie thought Jamie was? Okay? Is there a difference between the Jamie that Jamie used to think Jamie was and what you thought the flower was before? Is there any difference between those two things? Is there a difference between what you thought, what you used to think the flower was and, or the Jamie that Jamie used to think Jamie was? Is there a difference between those two things? Is there a difference between an honest politician or a balanced federal budget. They both don't exist. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying it's not true. I believe politicians, you go live in another country and you come home and you will kiss the American politicians' feet. Okay? You will kiss their feet. Go live in some other country, you know, where you can get beat up and dragged to jail and, and executed for for looking the wrong way at a police officer, you know. And then you'll you'll come home and bless Obama's feet, kiss his feet. Okay. So I I'm not saying that. Uh, but you see, there's no difference between two things that don't exist. Really. Okay? So. The thing that's not there when we discuss the emptiness of people and things is the same. Got it? Because it's not there. Right? You can't say it's longer or shorter or fatter or skinnier. It's, they don't, they're not there. Okay. Make it a kyan. Kyan means? But, keishi kansaki ten del dharma de ne lawe dhampo de ne chi a How many empty men? I'm getting tired. I'm almost the first one. How many emptinesses are there in this room? Somebody said as many as there are objects and people. Okay? Because each one is not what it what you used to think it was. Got it? Each thing in this room and each person in this room is not what you used to think they were. Therefore, there is a kind of emptiness attached to each person and thing in this room. There's a chair that wasn't the chair that you thought it was in the vicinity of this chair. And then there's a mic that isn't the mic that Mike thought Mike was somewhere attached to me. Okay? The truth that I am not who I thought I was, does that exist? The truth that I am not who I thought I was, does that exist? Yes. Yeah. That that applies to me, right? Are are those truths the, the same? Yes. Yeah. No, because one is Mike. The truth that Mike is not who Mike thought Mike was, and the truth that Jamie is not the Jamie who Jamie thought Jamie was. Those are different truths because they apply to different things. Okay. One one applies to Jamie. One applies to Mike. These are different. The they are different, not in their content much, but they are different in who they apply to. Okay? If you put a hamburger on the throne, or you put a hamburger on the table, 
Is there a difference between the two hamburgers? Only in the sense that one is on the throne and one is on the table. If I say, go get the hamburger on the table, you will be able to get the right one. Because it's in a, it applies to a different object. Okay? Everybody has their own emptiness. Okay? What you are empty of is equally absent. <laughs> okay? What you are empty of is equally non-existent. Okay? But the lack of that thing is specific to you. Alright? Chew on that. Chew on that. So, so Pavoka Rinpoche says, it's easier to see the hamburger on the table than the hamburger on the throne. What, what's he talking about? <laughs> it's easier to understand that Mike is not Mike than it is to understand the chair is not the chair. That's all. It's easier to work with the emptiness of yourself than the emptiness of the chair or the carpet or anything else. All right? That's not the way what I usually say. Okay? We said the opposite the other day. We said you are so attached to yourself that it's hard to be honest about yourself. <laughs> He's looking at it in a slightly different way. He said, because it's intimate to you, let's attack it first. Because it's intimate to you, let's attack it first. I don't believe it's actually easier. Okay. But from a point of view, you can say it's easier. It's definitely the one you want to see first, though. Okay. If you can crack the emptiness of me, you can crack anything. So on that, on, in that sense, it's a good place to start. Okay. Uh, there are many different ways of proving emptiness. Okay? There are ne many different proofs to, to proving emptiness. Okay? And he mentions a few of them. He mentions that there are many classical proofs for proving emptiness. Okay? There's the pen, there's the aspirin, okay, all right? But in the old days, they used different ones, all right? And so he mentions a few names. He drops a few names, okay? Tendel bi rigpa, tendel bi rigpa. You are. Uh, Tendel Kirikpa means things are empty because they depend on other things. Things are empty because they depend on other things. I'll give you the I'll give you some classical versions of that. All right. Things depend on other things because results come from causes. Okay? Things depend on other things because results come from causes. Does it help to say that your boss was born from your, his mother, so you shouldn't get angry at him? Not much. Okay? It, it's true that your boss depends on his mother, and that's where he came from. But it doesn't really help you when you're mad at, at him, all right? Or her. Okay? So, so people came up with a higher version of emptiness. They said, or dependence, okay? Is it true that things depend on their parts? Yeah. I remember distinctly going to India and reading this PhD thesis from Harvard, all right? Somebody gave me a PhD thesis from Harvard. And there was a, sec there was a chapter called uh, Overcoming Desire for Growth. And... Uh, <laughs> And then it said, if you have a problem with desire for girls, just remember they are made of atoms, and it will go away. You know? Like, they're just made of atoms. They, they consist of their pieces. Concentrate on that, and you won't have desire for girls. You know? And it didn't work. Okay? <laughs> in, in fact, it seems kind of dumb to me now. That, they interpreted Buddhist philosophy to mean that. Okay, that, that is a kind of dependence, but it's not going to help you. you see? Does your boss have arms and legs? Yes. Does your boss depend on his arms and legs? Yes. Does that help you not be angry at your boss? <laughs> okay. Then the highest school says, oh, dependence means 
your boss depends on your projections coming out of your mind from things that you did to people in the past. Okay? Your, your boss's existence and your boss's yelling are coming from uh, you yelling in the past. And that's the meaning of dependent origination. Is that helpful in not getting mad at your boss? Yes. yes. Is it helpful in destroying your boss? Yes. <laughs> okay. You see, the yelling boss. I cleaned out 800 employees in my company. Over the course of my business career, I cleaned out 800 people. I had a perfect building. I didn't have a single creep in the whole building. You see? I took them on one by one. You see? You are yelling. I must have been yelling last week. I'm getting rid of you. I refuse to yell for a month. And then they quit. You know? Or they stopped yelling. You see? You can slowly clean out an office building. I did. 800 people. There wasn't one creep in the whole building. Some of you went there. I think, who? Lama Ora was there once. So people went. And I cleaned it up. Everybody was happy and clean and nice and happy. And, you know, it was weird. It was really weird. Uh, so that version of dependent origination can change the world, right? Consider your yelling boss. He is empty because he came from your projections. Is that a good argument? Yes. Is that a proof of emptiness? Yes. Is that a good proof of emptiness? Yes. Consider your yelling boss. They are empty because they are coming from how you treated people in the past. Is that, is that a convincing argument for emptiness? It's a correct argument for emptiness. Okay? That's Stendhal Pipak. That's mentioned in the text. Stendhal uh, Rigpa. Okay? That's the meaning of the argument in favor of emptiness based on dependence, all right? I almost said got it. Did you get it? <laughs> all right, next we're going to, tomorrow, okay, I'm quitting. Uh, tomorrow, we will go to Nam Nungi Rikpa. Okay, you want to just block that out? Emo? The first five syllables there. Nandun Kirikpa. Alright? Tomorrow we are going to do Nandun Kirikpa. Alright? We are going to talk about the argument for emptiness which has seven parts. There's an argument for emptiness which has seven parts. It's a beautiful ar argument which is found in uh, Melinda Pinda. What's that? <laughs> Melinda Pinda. These are the questions of Melinda. Who's Melinda? What's his real name? Menander. Men Menander. Or Menendra. Menander. Menander was a Greek, okay? Menander was one of the people that uh, descended from the people that Alexander dropped off in India before he ran back to home, okay? So Alexander dropped a few kings off in India and, and went back home. And Menander was descended, he was a Greek king, okay? And then he got into a debate with a Buddhist monk in India. And that was recorded uh, many, many years ago. It was uh, BC, 200. Alexander reached India, I think it's 256 BC or something like that. Before Christ was born, Alexander the Great reached India, dropped off some kings there, and they had arguments with Buddhist monks, <laughs> which were recorded. And Namdungi Ripa comes from there. It's a beautiful meeting of East and West uh, 2,200 years ago. Okay. It's very beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. It's an argument for emptiness, which, which they say Aristotle might have heard from Alexander. All right? Okay.